Gary Lockyer, thanks for speaking to us. So you retired back in 2008. You've gone from professional boxing to now being the trainer within the sport. How has that transition been for you? Quite easy, actually. Um, I think um, I'd fell out of love with, with the game, I think, you know, quite a few years before I retired. But um, training and managing fighters now is, is really, really good. I'm enjoying every aspect of it, to be honest. I'm here now to see Lewis Reese training out today. Tell us a bit about how you discovered him and a bit about his background. Well, Lewis, he needed no introduction to me at all because I'd seen him in the amateurs. Um, he won no end of you know Four Nations titles and he was on the GB squad for three years. I sort of tried to try to get hold of him, and but he was at the GB squad, so it was very difficult. But then when I found out he'd actually left, I got straight on to him and his dad. Um, his dad, and he's been brought up very, very well. His dad's a good guy and uh, basically put his trust in me. Got him a contract with Frank, and um, he's 2 0 now with two stoppages, and he's looking good. Now, Jose has had two professional fights, both winning by stoppage. His first one was at the O2 Arena. How proud of him were you? I didn't expect the stoppage because Sid Razak is, uh, he just comes to mess you about and, and survive, and he stopped Sid in two rounds, which was, which was really good. I think it impressed a lot of people. Still got the 100% stoppage record, but uh, you know it's going to come a time now. Even next fight, maybe where he has to do a few rounds and learn a little bit. Are you happy with the uh, commitment that he's been putting into the sport as well? Uh, he sleeps in a little bit too long, I think. You know, but uh, he's. Uh, we don't want to ask him to come to the gym most of the time he's there, but uh, he's got to get his ass out of bed in, in future earlier in the morning. So. have also, uh, you've mentioned, you've compared him to the likes of James DeGale to Frankie Gavin. Now, James had a great win on the weekend, new European champion. Do you see Lewis following in that success? Yeah, but he needs to fight. You know, he needs to fight and he needs to fight regular. I mean, it was, it was different with those guys because when they turned pro, um, they turned pro under a lot of publicity and uh, they had they were fighting every, you know, every six weeks or two months or so. Um, it's going to be hard for Lewis because he's not fighting that long. And, um, you know, when Lewis steps in the ring, he's going to prove himself and uh, he's going to win every time and, and prove his worth. So are there any dates in the pipeline at the moment? Or are you still waiting on the next fight? Yeah, I spoke to Dean yesterday and he said he's going to be fighting before Christmas. Um, you know, Dean's done, doing a marvellous job with him and he's, he's basically stepping him up to six rounds next time, um, saying that he's going to put him against a named opponent, someone who's going to give him a test. So um, I'm happy with everything. Frankie Gavin as well, he's shown his support, he's spoken well of Lewis, he's fighting the end of the month, WBO Intercontinental title, how do you see that fight going? Frankie's a fantastic talent, you know, and obviously I've spoken to Lewis about him as well and he said he's you know, one of the best he's ever sparred, so I think you know, there's, there's a few problems with Frankie, I, I don't know, you know what the situation is, I mean, obviously there's a reason why he didn't really perform against Curtis Woodhouse, but I mean, he knows that, and he's had a change of camp now. Perhaps that'll help, perhaps it won't, I don't know. But, um, you know, we all hope to see Frankie in, in the form that we know he can produce. Finally, going back to last weekend's fight, Nathan Cleverley, Tony Bell. You know, you've known both guys for many years. What did you think of their performance and was it the result you were expecting? No, I mean, to be honest, you know, I'd spoken to Tony and, and Tony was very, very confident. Obviously, I see Nathan Cleverley all the time because he does a bit of conditioning in this gym and uh, he was very confident as well. I think I... I expected it two ways. I thought if, if, if Tony tried to box, I thought he was going to get well beaten. But I thought if he tried to fight, that was his best chance. But um, he boxed and he proved me completely wrong. I think he proved a lot of people wrong and he made it very, very close. I mean, I had Nathan winning by one round with the last round being the only difference between the fighters. I think Nathan was a little bit, you know, too fit over the 12 rounds. And I think he proved it in the last round. But as I've said to a couple of people, you know, if, if the fight had gone to Bellew, I don't think anybody could have complained because he put in such a good performance. Thanks for speaking to us. Thank you.